make this as large as you want it. You can make it any shape you want it. But it's gonna just kind of take you around like this. <laughs> My name is K3Gamer K3. I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to a new episode of my Minecraft build series. So last time I showed you the giant pit that I dug. Today we're gonna be putting in some towers. And I'm gonna show you how to make that perfect spiral staircase I was talking about. It's gonna look something like that. And uh, yep, I got it going all the way up there already. This side looks a little funny because it's got to meet with a corner. But it's all kind of rounded all around the outsides. Kind of like an octagon shape. Um, but that's not the important part. You can make this as large as you want it. You can make it any shape you want it. But it's going to just kind of take you around like this. And it'll let you out on each floor. And it just keeps going up. So the key is these migrating corner pieces. And as you go around, they just keep taking you up. There's no awkward flat spaces. I mean, sure, they kind of lead into the wall, but I think it all looks nice. It's pretty good for a Minecraft spiral staircase, anyways. So it's not the fastest thing in the world. You cannot actually put rails in here because uh, you can't curve a rail on an incline. Well, that's okay, I just kind of want it to look uh, medieval. No need for rails or anything like that. Uh, I do have elevator over here. It's Hermes. Oh, alright, here we go. Um, I'll, I'll bring you guys back when I get to the top. Alright, so we're at the top. And this is by no means what's going to look like when I'm done. I just have it all fenced off right now. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything on me to dig down the wall. Crap. So that's the pit, guys. You can see a lot better. There's like that trail of torches leading off to where the horses are. Way, way, way out there. There's another one out that way, actually. I'll meet you guys back at the bottom and I'll tell you uh, how to make one of these. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to build one of those. So the most important part is this core piece here. So this piece is going to determine how high you go uh, with one complete circuit, if that makes sense. And basically, how high you go is going to be the perimeter of this. So there's 3 times 4 is 12. So each floor is 12 high. Now, if you don't care where your floor connects in relation to the area around the core, then it doesn't matter. You can do whatever core size you want to do. Definitely use a square for the center. And since I did want my floors to be raised up 12, I used 3. This does mean that your floor height has to be a multiple of 4. And that's about the only catch with this. Unless, of course, you don't care where your floors connect, like on what side of this circle. Like if you want to put it in the center or something, that works. Next is the width. Now I chose 5. I think that's plenty wide. It looks pretty good. I don't recommend going too much over what the center is, which is three. Five is two over. That's about where you want it. Um, but again, it doesn't really matter. You can make this as wide as you want to, and you can make this outside any funky shape that you want to. It's really just the core part that matters. Um, and then the next part is the outside wall. I'd recommend an octagon because I think it uh, completes it pretty well, makes it circular enough. And it is based pretty much off square shape, so octagon's probably the best you're going to get. 
if there's too many, if it goes out too much, it starts to look funny because you get stairs just going into this empty void. So this at least keeps it smooth. If you're wondering why you only go up on every side of this and you don't do any raising on a corner, it's because stairs curve at 90 degree angles. They only wants to do that four times around the square. Trying to do it eight times makes really funky corners and you have to get the stairs to do funky zigzags and it just it doesn't look good. Although you can do that if you want to do that. Alright, so once you have your once you've decided on a core and once you've decided on a width, I highly recommend like drawing this out, plotting this out, and I actually made a tool to help with that. Okay, so this is what I did in Excel. There's a crazy formula in here, and with a really brief five second explanation, it tells it to turn from a zero to a one if it meets the conditions for any one of the eight sides or the core piece. And each one has uh, x and y minimum range, the actual equation for the line, and an x and y maximum range. Um, I mean, when applicable for any of them. So we just go over here. My core is going to be 3. And my width is going to be 5. And you can see it draws it for me. This is the exact dimensions that I want. So here, it says straight is 7. That just means this is 7, or any one of the straight pieces. And diagonal is 5, that's the diagonals. Um, I did make this so it prefers longer straights over longer diagonals, but other than that it keeps it pretty similar. It gives you your total diameter. And if you want it to, it'll even show you the core. And you can play around with this and do whatever numbers you want it. It'll do anything, but right now... Let's see if I zoom out here. 2020 is the biggest um, I have it set to be able to do. You can make this do as much as you want. All you have to do is copy this equation from here or from this one. Highlight all the places you want to put it and paste. So now if I make this larger. All right, so it's there, just it's not getting colored purple. Um, so all you have to do for that is highlight the squares, go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules if it's equal to. One, uh, custom, fill, purple, okay. Ta-da! So that's how that works. And I'd also need to paste it here. Alright, so you just saw the ones roll over. Alright, let's do that again real quick. That's all there is to it. You can make this as much as you want. I was playing around with it and you can... I did it a thousand by a thousand, but it took it forever to calculate any of those. You couldn't really see them. You had to zoom out so far. You can't see any of the grid. It's kind of pointless. Um, but it's definitely doable. Alright, so... I only need the core to be three. So that it gets raised up twelve. And I only want it five wide. So that's all I need. Alright, so the next step is to draw on the stairs. So I recommend taking a screenshot or printing it out and just kind of drawing over it. Okay, so I took a screenshot, pasted and cropped it in paint. And I know what you're thinking, I'm going to make this as quick and painless as possible. So this is the part where you draw on the stairs so you know how to shape them and where to start. So all you do is draw some corner pieces in 
like that. So I like going around the stairs counterclockwise as I'm going up. So these are just going to point like out with me. They're going to be like the far corners coming with you, but then out against you. And they're just going to point coming around like this. And all I have to do is extend those out just like that. And then start drawing straight lines coming off their straights. And when you meet another corner, just turn with it. Stop when you hit a wall. So just draw lines between all of them. It should look something like that. So that's the top plan. When you're deciding where to start, figure out where exactly you want it to connect. Each one of these is going to be raised up one. Um, so just find a line and then that's the line you're going to start with and you're going to build off it from there. I'm going to change this a little bit so that where it meets up is a little smoother and aesthetically pleasing. There, much better. Okay, so now that we have the build plan, I recommend laying out an outline. Never hurts, always helps. And after you get the outline done, the first thing you're going to want to do is build up the walls so you have something to work against. So I can just jump down, it's not that much fall damage, but that's what water buckets are for. So I always carry one just in case you need to get down. Alright, and all I did here was leave the little walkway to come in. And I wanted it wide enough to get a horse through. Alright, so this one's going to look just like the other one. I'm going to come in, and then the stairs are going to start. Um, that took about... Just about nine those. I should only take a couple of these. Alright, so I want my stairs to start on this level. So I'm going to start by placing the stair there and have it curve towards me. And I know on the plan it should curve here, but I don't want it to for the first level. Alright, so you just go the stair that goes with it. Make another curve one so that the curve is coming across. And you pretty much just uh, layer the stairs together. Alright, so another straight, another straight, and this one's where the curve's gonna happen. So now that we're at the far end of this one, we're going to have another curve happen with this one. 
I always curve after. So I always place it doing the straight part. That curve coming around meets this corner. So it's also going to bend here. And it's going to come around. And eventually it's going to hit this wall. Alright, let's do it again. Curve comes from here, straight diagonal to there. going to curve with this curve. And that's all you have to do is uh, keep, keep the curves going oh, up and diagonal. Still getting used to this keyboard a little bit. It's a brand new one, it's mechanical now. The click should sound a lot better than the high pitched squeak ones. It's supposed to be a silent mechanical keyboard. Yeah, a lot less clicky than mechanical ones would normally be. That's why I like how the corner comes straight across. If this wall had another dip out, you'd have a straight that didn't connect to anything and led to nowhere. And that's why I don't like having the stair width be more than a couple over the core width. And you always play around with your designs, put them in that, um, put them in Excel. I have that available for download. And play around with it and you can see what looks good kind of ahead of time. Oh, I only built this one up 12, just so you can see how it goes around once. Alright, looks like we have two more. Nope. This is the last layer for this once around. Alright. So this one should perfectly meet up with that one. Like I said, there should be some straights over here, but I didn't want the first layer to have those. I don't think it would look good, it would just be kind of pointless. Um, but yeah, you just keep going, doing this up and around. Build the walls up higher. And keep going with it. But it's a pretty functional staircase. There's no awkward flats, so there, and it gets you up and down faster because there's no flats. Get that one I dropped earlier. Works pretty well. And it's great because it fits horses, or you can have it fit horses. Uh, this would be a great place to hide a monster dropper. Um, a little, you only have room for one in the core and one this size. You can make the core larger and it would work perfectly for a monster dropper. So, I'm going to keep building this one and then I'm going to get the other two built. Well, it de rendered. Eventually, that one will go all the way up like this one. And then I just need the other two. And we'll have a nice outline for this castle. I'm having a hard time deciding if I want to put the sides on the castle or if I want to do the floors. And I think I want to do the floors just because it's going to make the sides more accessible. 
These stairs will bring me up. If I can walk on the floors, I can get to most of the sides pretty easily. And then this thing is going to be absolutely huge and it's going to be amazing. Alright, you want to see how the map makes it look now? Um, there's snow down there, but that's going to be okay for now. Alright, not too different, just kind of filled in there now. You can see the fences I put on top for that one. Yeah, not too shabby. Okay, so I'm going to finish building these. I'll see you next time when I'm showing you how to put in the floors with a perfect lighting plan. It's optimized so all the lights are perfectly spaced out as far as you can space them out without worrying about any mob spawning. And I know I'm in peaceful, but I hope to turn this into survival once the castle's done. I don't know, I could do elevators, but I really wanted this to be more medieval, and I really don't have any slime in peaceful mode to do that right now. Maybe in the future, but that's gonna be a heck of a lot of slime to do that on all four sides. I think it's gonna be hard enough getting the automated storage and sorting system done. So that's how you make a perfect spiral staircase. Large scale, no awkward flats, geometrically perfect. It's my own design. If you want that Excel file, look in the description for a link to download it, as well as a link to download this file at this point so you can come check out the finished staircase and see if you like it for yourself. Alright, that's all for today. Leave a like for the perfect spiral staircase. Next time I'm going to be putting in the floors. We're going to get a sense of how massive this is going to be and it's going to have an optimal lighting plan put into it. So don't miss that. After that one we'll be putting the sides on this. And that's going to have a really nice intricate design. Don't miss that either. Subscribe for more videos. Be my friends on Facebook and Twitter. And I hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you next time.